So we are so excited. So please welcome Mr. Mike Caveney. <laughs> seventies, a young spiritualist by the name of Florence Cook conducted seances throughout America and England. She was the first medium to produce a full body materialization. And during these seances, her usual spirit guide was the ghostly image of a young girl by the name of Katie King. Now during the years that she performed throughout America and England, Florence Cook became internationally known and the name Katie King became so closely associated with spiritualism that a number of decades later, some very famous magicians, including Harry Keller, Howard Thurston, and Charles Carter, all named their spirit cabinet routine the Katie King Seance. And that brings us to this poster. It's actually a lithograph. It was printed in 1926 to advertise Carter the Great and his version of the spirit cabinet. Look, do the dead materialize? That's the question that we aim to answer tonight. And that poster brings us to the apparatus that you see on the stage before you. This is the original spirit cabinet that traveled around the world with Carter the Great more than 100 years ago. And just as he did at every performance, we are going to assemble it right before your eyes. Gentlemen, if you would. Yes, I should point out, assembling this uh, cabinet is no easy task. It was originally built in 1909 in a famous magic workshop in New York City owned by the Martika brothers. Now these brothers knew the rigors of the road at that time and they then elected to build this cabinet out of solid maple wood, one of the hardest and certainly one of the heaviest woods known. When this is completed, it weighs a whopping 530 pounds. The front panel that they're installing right now is outfitted with two large doors. When these doors are open, you will have a clear view into the interior of the cabinet. And as you can see, it's basically a large wardrobe cabinet raised up off the floor. The top of the cabinet will prevent anybody or anything from entering from above. And now we'd like you to see all sides of the spirit cabinet. You know, I've owned this thing for almost 25 years. And yet this week is the first time I've ever attempted a seance inside. Now the cabinet itself, of course, has hosted thousands of seances during the decades that it traveled around the world with Carter the Great. My hope tonight is, is that the spirit of Katie King will be looking down on us and recognize these familiar walls. And they will bring back nothing but fond memories of her good friend, Charles Carter. And in memory of him, in honor of him, she will elect to visit us one more time. But first, I'd like to invite a gentleman from the audience to come and inspect the spirit cabinet. I can't see a thing. Perhaps Jack. Jack, is there someone out there? You have someone. Good. Help him up the stairs. It's a little dark. Good. Thank you, Jack. And come right over here, my friend. Your name is? Jim. Jim. Nice to meet you, Jim. I'm Mike. And you have an easy job tonight, but an important job. Jim, I was going to give you a flashlight so that you could look where you wanted, but then we decided that in order to make this as familiar as possible for our invited guest, we should use a 1909 version of a flashlight. So that lantern is for you, Jim, and what I'd like you to do is take a quick peek inside the cabinet. Looks like every other spirit cabinet you've seen. <laughs> and then, Jim, I want you to walk all the way around the outside. I'll meet you over here. I'm not exactly what it is you're supposed to be looking for back there, but just assure everyone that, that this cabinet is, as described, a large, empty wardrobe cabinet. Yes? That's it. Good. Perfect. Now, 
upstage there's a, a chair. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to sit in that chair. And from that vantage point, you will have a perfect view of the back of the cabinet, as well as above and below. If you see anything, even slightly suspicious, I want you to give us a sign. One if by land, two if by sea. <laughs> you get the idea. Grab a seat back there. All right? And now we will place a tambourine, a bell, inside the cabinet. These are objects that are familiar to all spirits. And because spirits do their best work in the dark, I am going to close the doors, plunging the cabinet into darkness. Now my hope is, is that the spirit of Katie King will recognize these objects and she will announce her presence by giving us a rattle of the tambourine, a ringing of the bell, or a tap tap on the inside of the cabinet. If we get even a faint sign from any of these objects, I will declare this seance a success. But we do need a sign. I hate to admit it, but we haven't had a lot of success contacting the spirits this week. And it would appear that the spirit of Katie King has decided not to join us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, is that you? <laughs> yes, indeed it is. And ladies and gentlemen, it would appear that She's not too happy about being forgotten over the past 80 years. Katie, I assure you, you have not been forgotten, but it's very difficult, you must understand, assembling a group of uh, believers such as we have here tonight. Um, I'll tell you what, perhaps, perhaps you'd be uh, willing to communicate with us using the code that you worked with Charles. You remember the code, one tap for no, two taps for yes. Do you remember that code? Excellent. Uh, and so maybe you'd be willing then to answer some questions for us. Well, so that is the problem. Well, so that, that is the problem. The problem being that the human eye is incapable of seeing a spirit form. And what we humans can't see, we tend not to believe. There is one thing, thank you, Ronnie, that will allow us to see a spirit, at least see where they are and what they're doing. And that is if they are willing to cover themselves with a piece of fabric. I am told that spirits find this to be childish and even a little humiliating. <laughs> And I can verify that. <laughs> it is humiliating. But they also know that this is the best way to convince a skeptic that they really do exist. Sometime, a spirit's desire to convince the non-believers that they are present is greater than their reluctance to dress up like a ghost. Jim, did, did you see anything back there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry about that, but uh, your, your job is very important. You're doing a great job. Stay vigilant. It appears to be quiet on the outside of the cabinet. Let's see what's going on inside.
that spirit. Katie King. Don't leave us. There's so much we can learn from you. spiritualism and I certainly don't like whatever the heck was that flew into that well we're too late now I um, uh, Ron the cloth is still in here Ronnie get that cloth out of there Jack knock the top off of this thing okay Where the heck is Jim Jim come down here Jim, good. Jim did you see anything enter or leave the cabinet I didn't see anything at all you didn't see anything well thank you for being the eyes and ears my advice to you now, Jim, is to run like hell, Jim. You know, maybe in uh, 1870, that was a cute little spirit guide, but I have to tell you, 130 years later, that face, we got to get this thing apart before she decides to move in full time. Chris, knock this thing apart. I was just thinking about Halloween night in a few weeks and of all the little ghosts that will be running down my street and wondering, will they all be really neighborhood kids or is it possible that just one might be a real spirit? Based on what we've seen here tonight, I would say that the evidence is conclusive. Spirits do indeed walk among us. <laughs> Woo!